the mercury button cell is a cell that's used because of its very small size um, it looks like basically a button from a coat or a jacket uh, very small construction, very compact, um, lasts a long time in storage, not rechargeable, and it has a, a chemistry, a structure similar to other cells, but the chemistry is different. So the first part we have is a steel cap with a slight, I'll just fix that up. Like a steel cap, it has a slight raise, not much usually. It has some rubber around here. And underneath this cap is a zinc anode. So that's zinc solid. Remember the dry cell had a zinc um, anode around the outside. This one has it built inside the battery. It then has a case, usually made of steel, and these two don't touch the case and the tip. And it goes up and around, comes down, and then you have the bottom of the battery. Okay, remember this is, I've expanded it so that you can see better inside. Inside we have a cathode, so this zinc is the anode part of the cell that's going to be oxidized. Down the bottom here we have the cathode, that's made of mercury oxide, so mercuric oxide or mercury oxide mixed with carbon graphite. Okay, solid little pieces of carbon and they help to make this into an, a cathode into an electrode that will conduct electricity. In between that we need our electrolyte and we mainly have potassium hydroxide. We also have some zinc oxide and some of this zinc oxide comes from the anode and, and that is in layers inside here between the two electrodes and it's sort of like a, a paste okay so here's our battery at the anode we have oxidation so that means zinc solid that's what, the way it exists when you first buy the battery is going to zinc 2 plus, it's going to a 2 plus oxidation state from a zero as an atom plus and we need to balance both sides of this equation so we need mi minuses here and we need two of them now we have two, mi 2 plus 2 minus gives zero so we have a balanced half equation and that's what's happening here at the anode at the cathode it's a little bit more complicated we have mercury oxide, we have water from the paste, and we have electrons. Now, this is reduction here, happening at the cathode, remember a red cap. And our, one of these substances, mercury, is accepting electrodes. So it, is mercuric oxide, it's in HG2 plus and oxygen is 2 minus. When it accepts two electrons, it becomes solid mercury. And it also, the water here is converted into um, 2 OH minus. And that, you can see there's quite a lot of it in the center there anyway for the potassium hydroxide. Essentially, that's, that's what's happening at the cathode. Mercuric oxides or mercury is being reduced to 
mercury metal and zinc is being oxidized. So you've got two electrons in the zinc part of the cell that will go down to this part of the cell. Now they don't go down through the battery. They'll come out of the battery and pass around a wire through an object. Could be a, a multimeter, a voltmeter, something that shows electricity, or it could be a, a light or a watch or some other device that needs electricity. That wire that I'm drawing now then goes down back and touches the other side of the battery. Now when these two sides touch, the electrodes from the zinc, the electron sorry, can move up through the wire and go over to the other side to the cathode. Now we don't want to build up a charge at the cathode, so ions from this part here move up a little bit like a salt bridge between two parts, two cells. Those two wires, oh sorry, the salt bridge carries ions while electrons go from the electrodes over. So ions would go one way and electrons would go the other. It's the same inside this button cell. Electrons are going out, around, down to this side. Now you can't have a build up of negative charge at this end. So ions carry a negative charge, these OH minus ions, and they move up towards the anode, the zinc anode. And this battery basically runs out when that zinc anode is corroded, and then this reaction starts to stop. Now you could look on the back of the periodic table, or uh, in the HSC data sheet, and you could get the voltages and find the correct ones. The zinc being oxidized, so I think they're mainly reduction voltages. You might have to choose the right direction. And you want the one with zinc going this way as in the equation, and mercury going from Hg2 plus to Hg solid plus, sorry, plus two electrons on this side. And you'll get a voltage. Now that voltage might be, um, I'm not really sure, but one of them could be negative. The other one would be positive. And when you add those two voltages together for the equations in the right direction, you'll get an overall voltage for your cell. And that's pretty much the same as it is for working out a galvanic cell, what the, elect the, um, the overall voltage is. So remember, a couple of things. Reduction at the cathode. Oxidation at the anode. Here and zinc is used for our anode in both types of cells so you can compare the cells they both use a zinc anode um, sometimes a, merc a button cell might not be a mercury button cell so make sure that you say that it's a mercury button cell sometimes they use silver instead of mercury or um, I'm just trying to think of another one but there could be another metal used instead of the uh, mercury part of the cell. Now, obviously mercury not good for the environment if these break down they can corrode and release that mercury but it's a very small amount. Um, they're, they're better for their practicality and their compact size. They're, they last a very long time without uh, the reaction breaking down so they hold their voltage for a long time. They have a long shelf life and you can look, there's slides in the PowerPoints about comparing the two, a button cell and a dry cell. Neither can be recharged. So they have things in common and they have things that are different. Um, the dry cells tend to be used for everything 
and button cells tend to be used for their compact size, their good voltage supply, and their long shelf life. So things like watches, where you don't want to be changing the battery a lot. They're very small size, makes them fit in a small place. And the chemistry means that they last for quite a long time on the shelf without breaking down. Okay, I hope that's helpful.